Hello, it's Ricardo, and welcome back to the final episode of Star Trek, the 25th anniversary, episode seven. We've been through all the plots. We've been through Demon World, Hijacked, Love Labor Jeopardize, Another Fine Mess, Feathered Serpent, That Old Devil Moon, and now, episode seven is Vengeance. Now, Vengeance, we find the Enterprise responding to a distress call from the USS Republic, it's been nearly destroyed. Captain James T. Kirk must figure out what destroyed the ship and stop those responsible for striking yet again. And like the other missions, this mission is longer and more complex in the CD version, the enhanced CD version, which I'm playing of this game. The original floppy version of this episode consisted of only a brief away team segment followed by an extensive ship-to-ship -ship combat sequence. Now, with the CD version of the game, which you get on Steam for about six British pounds, the following the conclusion of the last mission is a title card that memorizes, or memorializes, should I say, Gene Roddenberry, with a short voiceover narration by William Shatner, praising his life and his contribution to not only ethics, but also the Star Trek universe. And as we've mentioned, the player takes on the role of Captain James T. Kirk on board the Enterprise, it's typically split into two modes, the away missions and some ship combat. You get to interact with everybody on board the Starship Enterprise and with McCoy, Spock, a red shirt, and of course you control James T. Kirk. Now on the bridge you've got Scotty, Uhura, Sulu and Chekhov as well. You can manage ship systems within combat, shields, phasers, photon torpedoes, do repairs on the engines, repairs on the shields and all of that. But anyway, this is part seven. You should all be very familiar with this. If not, I'd encourage you to go back and check out the playlist of Star Trek the 25th anniversary. Um, if you haven't done so, do me a favor. Click that like and subscribe button. It goes a hell of a long way on YouTube these days. And also, if you haven't done so, ring that notification bell and turn notifications on. I'm not gonna wrap it all the way through this. Let's let the story play out and get some continuity. <laughs> Vengeance. Captain's log. We are arriving at the last known position of the USS Republic, which reported that it was under attack 12 hours ago. Captain, the ship's sensors have picked up what appears to be a starship. Minimal life support, minimal engine power, and only two life forms. One on the bridge, the other in sickbay. Both appear to be gravely injured. It is the Republic. Spock, come with me. Mr. Scott, you have the car. I am preparing an information packet for Starfleet. Shall I send it or wait for you to return? Send it now. If a hostile ship arrives, head immediately for Starbase 24. Wait until we get back. No sense giving Starfleet incomplete information. If anyone else arrives, beam us aboard and raise shields immediately. Send it now. If a hostile ship arrives, head immediately for Starbase 24. Jim, what kind of butcher would do something like this? I don't know, Bones. We're too far from the Klingon and Romulan borders for it to be one of their ships. Enterprise to Captain Kirk. Kirk here. What is it, Scotty? We picked up a distress signal. It appears a trading vessel is having a wee bit of trouble with their warp drive. What condition is the Republic in? It's a mess, Scotty. Life support's functioning, but that's about it. I've done a primary scan of the Republic's systems. Main and auxiliary power is out. Life support is stable. I also read that communications are operable. Can we beam you back, Captain? Do the sensors read any other ships in the sector? Besides the trade vessel, this sector is clear, sir. Mr. Scott, we will continue here. Assist the trade ship and return here. If we need assistance, we'll contact you. You sure you'll be all right, Captain? Yes, Scotty. Just don't take too long. Kirk out. Well, gentlemen, let's see if we can re-establish power. Jim, don't forget. There's another survivor on board. We've got to find him. We're too late. This man must have died just a few moments ago. Can you bring him back? Punctured lung. 
nerve damage, brain damage, fractured arm and ribs. It's a miracle he lasted as long as he did. He's not coming back, Jim. They're dead, Jim. All of them. Captain, records indicate that this ship was attacked by a Constitution-class starship. Any idea of which one it was? I am reading the record of the transponder signal, NCC-1701. It's the Enterprise, Captain. Someone must have tampered with the computer records. May I remind you, Doctor, that the main computer of a Constitution-class starship has safeguards against such an intrusion. Furthermore, I do not see any discrepancies in any of the files that I am able to access. Nothing to report, Captain. Tricorder readings indicate that the ship is running on minimal battery power. Only life support and essential systems are currently running. There are no more computer entries accessible from this station. My tricorder has picked up the final entry of the Republic. We're under attack. Our sensors are inoperative. We're trying to get shields up. Our rear deflectors down. It appears our enemy is a Constitution-class starship. We've tried to defend ourselves. We've hailed them, but no response. That's all there is, Captain. Dick Patterson was never one for making long speeches. dead, Jim. All of them. The crewman's death was pointless, just like too many deaths in human history. There is a twisted mess of wire and metal falling from the gaping hole in the ceiling. It is blocking access to Turbo Lift 2. The debris is highly unstable, Captain. I recommend we try to find a support of some kind to secure the ceiling. Yet another crewman of the Republic whose life was unfairly abbreviated. I can't believe it. That's Brittany Murata. I knew her from my academy days. We studied alien history together. At least she's still alive, although just barely. She's suffering from severe trauma and internal bleeding. I'll see what I can do. Do what you can, Bones. I need to find out what happened here. She's in bad shape, Jim. I've tried to stabilize her, but it doesn't look good. No! You won't get us! Marotta, what happened? They said it was the Enterprise. They had visual confirmation. <laughs> What about the Enterprise? You killed us, Jim. We were friends for you. I trust you, Jim. It wasn't the Enterprise, Marotta. There's nothing more I can do. This is an empty hypodermic injector. This medical drill fires a microscopic phaser beam. You retrieve the medical drill. You pick up the empty hypodermic injector. Kirk to Enterprise. Kirk to Enterprise. Enterprise here. We're still tracking the distress call. Are you all right, sir? Yes, Uhura. Just wanted a status report. Kirk out. Well, gentlemen, let's see if we can re-establish power. This is a length of heavy-duty insulated power cable. You have taken the cable.
yet another crewman of the Republic whose life was unfairly abbreviated. This person's dead, Jim. A molecular saw, the 23rd century equivalent of a hacksaw. You retrieve the molecular saw. This is the maintenance panel for the auxiliary control room door. The panel has been fastened shut with some kind of sealant. Tricorder indicates that the panel is currently sealed by Federation standard molecular bonding cement. A common tritanium geranium support beam which has snapped away from the hull. The molecular saw easily cuts through the beam, separating it from the hull. You pick up the beam. It's a little heavy, but you manage it. stable. We should now be able to use turbo lift two, Captain. This is a length of heavy duty insulated power cable. You pick up a length of cable. This man is dead. There's nothing more I can do. Captain, I'm picking up a functioning energy source in the immediate vicinity. A rather large pile of debris. I'm picking up a high-energy power source somewhere under the debris. I recommend caution, Captain. Oh my god, Jim, is that what I think it is? Yes, Doctor. It is a portable fusion power pack. A few centimeters lower with that phaser and half the section would be history. Not to mention us. Actually, Doctor, 3.2 centimeters. And based on our proximity to the explosion and the angle of the beam. Thank you, Spock. I think we get the point. This is the most powerful portable energy storage device ever developed by man. It is used to provide temporary power to small systems when main or auxiliary power is unavailable. A standard portable fusion power pack. It is fully functional, Captain. You pick up the portable fusion power pack. This is a junction box used for temporary rerouting of engineering circuits. This is the emergency power input port for the fusion mixture regulator. These are the impulse engines for the Republic. This port is used to connect emergency power from the impulse engines to other systems if dedicated lines are damaged. This is a standard storage closet. The closet opens revealing a library of engineering technical journals. 
you take the engineering technical journals. The oil canister is bolted to the hull and can't be taken. The hypo is now filled with multipurpose oil. You connect a length of cable between the impulse engine and the junction box. You connect a length of cable between the regulator circuits and the junction box. Please select an impedance. Spock? Captain, the wrong setting on this particular device may cause the fusion reactors to melt down. We will have to do some research to determine the correct setting. The drill easily breaks through the seal of the panel. The panel opens easily. The debris is jammed in too tight. Initial scans show that the gear mechanism is currently jammed with metallic debris. Nothing happens. The oil seeps into and loosens the debris. The gears are completely cleared of debris. This is the impulse power allocation control. Indicators currently show no power output from the impulse engines. Damage from the battle has disabled the ship's main computer. These are the auxiliary helm and navigation controls for the Republic. Though they are intact, the ship is in no condition to move under her own power. This is a standard input-output slot for record decks. The impulse power allocation controls are functional, but there is no power available, Captain. These are the auxiliary helm and navigation controls for the Republic. Though they are intact, the ship is in no condition to move under her own power. Mr. Spock, what is the status of the ship's computer? There is extensive damage to the main processing unit of the ship's computer. It will take several days at a starbase to repair. We don't have several days, Mr. Spock. Unless we can find a suitable computational alternative, there will be no way to control the ship's systems. That's just great, Spock. We don't exactly carry an M5 computer in our inventory. Correct, Doctor. However, there may be another alternative. Linked tricorders, along with the circuits in the data reader, should have the processing power necessary to control a single starship system. Thank goodness for parallel processing. I don't know what computers could do without it. Nothing to report, Captain. This input-output slot for the record decks is still functional, Captain. These are Federation standard record decks. You take the record decks. Captain's Law, Stardate 6087.6. The Republic is currently approaching the Vardane system. Sensors have detected unusual energy fluctuations near one of the Vardanian moons. Starfleet has ordered us to investigate. Captain's Log, Stardate 6087.8. We are under attack by two unidentified ships. I don't know how they could have approached undetected. 
They must have some kind of cloaking device, although there are no reports of Romulans in this sector. Captain, Stardate 6088.1. We have successfully driven off our assailants. Major damage has been sustained by our warp engines. Communications has reported that USS Enterprise is in sector. I requested Mr. Scott's assistance in repairing damage to the Republic. With luck, we will be fully operational in a couple of days. Captain's log, Stardate 6088.5. First Officer Andrade commanding. The Enterprise has unexplicably opened fire upon us. Captain Patterson has been mortally wounded. We have sustained major damage to all systems. Impulse power is out. We cannot understand why... There are no more log decks, Captain. Nothing happens. Captain, I have examined the engineering journals. According to Chapter 18, we can run... Jim, do we really need a lesson in starship engineering? Spock, just tell me if they will help. Why, yes, Captain. Please select an impedance. Spock? Captain, the information obtained from the engineering journals indicates the correct impedance setting to be 19,000 ohms. Go ahead and adjust the setting, Spock. Power has now been restored, Captain. Spock crudely attaches the science tricorder to the computer console. Spock crudely attaches the medical tricorder to the computer console. Both tricorders are rigged into the main computer's central processing unit. We now have enough computational power to control a single ship's system. Captain, look! An Alasi ship! That ship was cloaked. Fascinating. Is that all you can say? Captain, I suggest we try to raise the shields. This is the impulse power allocation control. Indicators show impulse power online, but no power allocated to any systems. This is the fire control for the photon torpedoes. With impulse power online, and the tricorders performing computer control, I can divert power to... Weapons. Power allocated to weapon systems, Captain. Captain, I suggest we try to raise the shields. Mr. Spock, what is the condition of the fire control system? Weapons control is functioning properly. However, there appears to be a jam in the primary loading mechanism. Captain, the torpedo loading system is malfunctioning. To clear it, we will have to physically examine the mechanism. Currently, all turbo lift access to the torpedo bay is blocked by a hull breach. It is imperative that we get the weapons online. With impulse power online, and the tricorders performing computer control, I can divert power to... Weapons. Shields. Shields are up, sir. Captain, we are being hailed by the Alassi, Captain. Put it on screen, Spock. Well, if it isn't Captain Kirk. 
Fancy meeting you out here all alone in such a shabby starship. What do you want? You should be more civil, considering your enterprise is far away on a mercy mission helping that poor traitor. It was a setup? I can see why they made you, Captain. I assume since you haven't blasted us to bits, you want something. Why, yes I do. It seems you failed to give one of my associates some rather important information. The Masada, I presume. You want the locations of all your imprisoned comrades? Yes, Kirk. The Republic's computers will have the data just as your Enterprise would. I give you one minute to comply. Just try and get it. You can't threaten me. It will take time. The controls are smashed and the main computer's badly damaged. It will take hours to get power to the computer banks. Maybe I should just pump a few torpedoes into your shields and check it out for myself. The Republic will fall apart if you fire on us. Then you'll never get the data. All right, Kirk. We'll do it your way. I would rather not kill you. Besides, there's an old friend that wants to meet you. I give you 30 minutes. And remember, no tricks. Captain, the main computer is far beyond. Shut up, Spock. 30 minutes then. Kirk out. With impulse power online and the tricorders performing computer control, I can divert power to... Weapons. Shields. Transporter circuits. Captain, the Elasi can surely detect the lowering of our shields. They will undoubtedly try to board us if we lower them. Spock, what about the fusion power pack? Could we use it to power the transporter? I believe so, Captain. It would require a connection to the transporter circuits in the main control console. Then there is no power allocated to the transporter. Spock, would it be possible to connect the fusion power pack directly into the transporter power circuits? Fascinating. It can be done. However, the transporter will only be able to transport a single person. Do it, Spock. to see the logic in that action, Captain. Transporter systems are operational, Captain. Coordinates have been set to the photon torpedo loading bay. Ensign Cage, I want you to beam into the torpedo bay and unjam the loading mechanism. If you don't succeed, we'll all be on permanent shore leave in an Alasi jail. I'll do my best, sir. Do it, Spock. I've reached the torpedo loading bay, Captain. It's not too badly damaged, fortunately. What's causing the malfunction in the loading mechanism? The inner loading door is stuck in the closed position. Now, I can force it open, but when the loading cycle has begun, the room will lose pressure. We won't be able to beam back here again. Do it, Ensign. We'll just have to gamble that the system doesn't jam again. The door is open, Captain. I'm ready to transport back. Leave him back, Spock. <laughs> Turbo lift access is blocked by an extremely high radiation level. These are the auxiliary helm and navigation controls for the Republic. 
Though they are intact, the ship is in no condition to move under her own power. Well, Captain Kirk, I trust you and your valiant crew have retrieved the data I requested. Not yet. We're having trouble accessing all the data files. Yes, we have. You'll have to beam over and get it, though. The computer subspace transmitter is out. How convenient, Kirk. We'll beam over, but no tricks. My sensors read that only your shields have power. Lower them now. We'll comply. Kirk out. With impulse power online and the tricorders performing computer control, I can divert power to... Weapons. Power allocated to weapon systems, Captain. Sensors indicate that the Alassi ship has lowered its shields. I suggest we prepare your surprise soon, Captain. They will beam over any moment. I should have known you'd try something underhanded like this. Weapons Master, fire all weapons on the Republic! We can't, Captain. All weapon systems offline. Captain, the Enterprise is coming on high-speed approach. Activate cloaking device, Kirk. Until we meet again. Not too soon, I hope. Watch yourself, Captain. It may be sooner than you realize. Enterprise to Captain Kirk. Are you safe, sir? We're fine, Lieutenant. Sir, we picked up another ship nearby, and we came as fast as we could. It appeared to cloak. Were you attacked by Romulans? No, Ensign. It looks like the Alassi have been doing some business with him. Scotty, beam us back. We need to find that ship that attacked the Republic. Aye, Captain. Log Stardate 6089.6. We are in pursuit of the starship that destroyed the Republic. Its trail is leading us to the planet Vardane, a member of the Federation whose motives have not always matched the high ideals of other Federation cultures. Captain, I did not expect to hear you judge an entire culture. I understand the Republic. I had bad experiences with the Vardane long ago, Mr. Spock. Fascinating. Captain, I am reading a Constitution-class starship, heading for Vardane at Warp Factor 5. Captain, its transponder codes match ours. Sensors indicate it is an exact duplicate of the Enterprise, including hull markings. Open hailing frequencies. Increase to Warp Factor 8. Send a message to Starfleet. Captain, that ship, whoever it is, is slowing to Warp 3 and plotting an intercept course toward us. Captain, we're being hailed by the enemy ship. Captain Kirk, this is the Enterprise 2. I am Dr. Ayaz Verdell of the Verdane Defense Force. You do remember me, don't you, Captain? I remember you. Ten years ago, when I was on the Farragut, we exposed your unethical practices to the Vardane Council. The old Verdane Council. Politics is such a fickle business. The new one is much less concerned with trivial concerns. I remember your part in my disgrace, which is why when we began to construct our own Constitution-class ships, I insisted that we have our own Enterprise. How did you manage to build a Constitution-class ship? You have ten seconds to lower your shields and power down your weapons, or we will fire. You won't get away with this. The Vardane can't honestly expect to take on the entire Federation. How did you manage to build a Constitution-class ship? Our intelligence network is better than yours, Captain. How else does one gather secret information? You are a member of the Federation. You have signed Federation treaties. And we shall break them. The Federation's interference in our internal affairs is intolerable. You must have been building that ship long before the Turgon Crisis. Captain, all wars require justification. They aren't supposed to be fun. You have your justification and I have mine. Don't take diplomacy so seriously. However, Captain, I do intend to enjoy myself. 
I do intend to enjoy seeing Lieutenant Kirk's ship go up in flames. I shall laugh at the sight. We'll see who gets the last laugh, Bridell. I'm sure you would. You're a fool, Bridell. You can't defeat a trained Federation crew unless you ambush them. We'll see who gets the last laugh, Bridell. I have noted that the Federation enjoys talking, Captain. You may talk yourself to your grave. Prepare to be destroyed. Raising shields. Arming weapons. What if the Vardane have more constitution class vessels? The Federation will blockade Vardane until they agree to destroy their weapons facilities and all non-authorized ships. Message from Starfleet, Captain. On screen, Lieutenant. We have read your report on the destruction of the USS Republic and evaluate your performance at 100%. You and your crew received four commendation points. A perfect mission, Jim. You are a model for all Starfleet. We have reviewed your overall performance for this year at 100% Enterprise. Magnificent, Jim. Just magnificent. This will end up in the Starfleet Academy textbooks. My congratulations to you and your crew. They're talking about making you an admiral, Jim. But for now, I'm authorized to give you and your crew shore leave. Shore leave at last. I know this great spot on Cameron Star, Jim. You'll love it. Where you will no doubt, Doctor, wallow in sensory overload and emotional display. Well, heck, Spock, it wouldn't be any fun otherwise. Jim, we've got to find some way to get this Vulcan to let his ears down. Spock, you will come with us, won't you? I cannot let go by a chance to study the primitive and raw emotional outburst at the level I anticipate, Captain. That's the spirit, Spock. Okay, Admiral. What are you waiting for? I've got some adventure left in me before I accept an Admiral's desk job, Bones. Take us out of here, Mr. Sulu. Walk Factor 4. Very few people have the ability to fire up our imaginations and make us think about the human condition. Gene Roddenberry, the creator of Star Trek, was one of those people. He took us where no man has gone before and beyond. He created a starship, its crew, an entire universe, and brought them to life for millions of people. Without Gene, there would have been no Star Trek computer game or a Star Trek television series. Gene Roddenberry, born 1921, died 1991. We honor your memory. <laughs>